the python hunters track down a breeding machine, a legend they call the Mother Bird. Something to grab with. Meanwhile, serious illness threatens the teacher's pet. He just doesn't seem to be getting any better. As iguanas fall from trees. Coming down, coming down. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it, get it. And a reptile extravaganza slithers into town. This is the snake show. Invasive reptiles threaten Florida's wetlands. Oh, oh, oh. Iguanas, Nile monitors, and the most notorious of all, the giant Burmese python. Snake, snake, a snake right there. You got him? <laughs> oh, yeah. Now three men join forces to defend the Everglades. Biologist Sean Heflick. He's been chasing, breeding, and collecting reptiles his entire life. I've never been afraid of snakes. Exotic reptile breeder and cop Greg Graziani. He knows his pythons inside and out. I got my first Burmese python when I was 12 years old. And python breeding pro Michael Cole. He sold his designer color mutations for as much as $25,000. I've learned about reptiles the hard way. It was a passion. They are the Python Hunters. There's some good area. The python hunters and their kids are obsessed with reptiles. Keep your eyes open. Today, the children are on a field trip hunting wild snakes. It opens up here. This is nice. All right, now we got to get in snake mode, guys. Everybody quiet, eyes open. Start looking for some pythons or anything else that slithers. These junior python hunters all share one thing in common with their dads. They're desperate to be the first to spot a snake but they've got to be careful. Around here, some snakes are venomous. Snake! Where? Print. Dad does a quick safety check. Stay back. I don't know what it is. What is it? What is it? Come on. Let him get away. You think he'll bite you? No. You might want to get a hold of that head before he gets up by your face. Good catch, buddy. Thank you. What is it? A rat snake. It's a yellow. Don't let him twist like that. Don't let him twist. Get up there. Get him by the head. Rat snakes are non-venomous, but they can be aggressive. Good job. Ooh, look at that. Look at it. All right. Look at that little guy. He wants a piece of you, doesn't he? Yes. Yeah. Don't let go. You gave your daddy the good end. <laughs> he just got bust again. That's what he loves, man. Make sure he can breathe. He'll loosen up just a little bit. Uh-oh. <laughs> He's not going to let go now until you let go. Is he going to eat it or let go of it? I say eat. <laughs> the guys see some feeding response there. Look, oh, look, he's going up the finger. Hey, Lane, he's... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I thought you just lost a finger, Lane. I was going to tell you to stick his finger in its mouth, but you didn't even have to. You know what the nice part about this is, is that it's a yellow rat snake, and he's indigenous to Florida, so we can let him go. OK. Find a good spot. He was right in here. Get him off the trail. Anybody else want to hold The him? yellow rat snake can grow up to two meters. This one's young and still on the short side, but it'll grow on a diet of rodents and birds. Hey, nice job, buddy. Little python hunter, huh? All right, let's get a berm. Catching a native species is an encouraging sign the ecosystem is healthy, and it's good practice for the important job of capturing harmful invasive species like the Burmese python. Back in town, the world's coolest and most exotic reptiles have invaded Orlando. All right. Uh, we're loading the back here? Yeah, we're going right in this door on the other side of this trailer right here. It's called Repticon, and it's an event for breeders who make their living buying and selling lizards and snakes. That's beautiful. Displays slither with one-of-a-kind treasures, while titans and more manageable critters woo the crowds. I'm going to unload inside so I can move the van and... All right, we'll meet you at the table. As usual, Greg is showing off Jack, his remarkable albino alligator. And he can't help making mischief with Sean's main attraction, Precious, the first ever baby albino alligator bred in captivity by a private breeder. I'm suspicious after he just said that since I was outside that I'm gonna open this up and you morons have, 
have done something with it. Why would we do that? Why would, why would we do Are you kidding me? What do you got in your pants, Greg? Mm-hmm. What's Sean's gator doing to your pants? <laughs> yeah, you got to watch him. I, I just, Every I can't believe oh, that he left that here unlocked under the table, walked out. Does there. he manhandle you? Oh, you'd think Does he manhandle you? Despite lots of trying, Greg hasn't been able to breed albino babies yet, so a little jealousy is understandable. When are you going to make me some of those? I'm tired of hearing Sean's mouth. Don't let him get too close. Things to come. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. Precious won't eat him. <laughs> what are they eating? Oh, uh, they're eating crickets and minnows and croc chow and they eat everything. Baby Precious and six-year-old Jack are two of only 50 albino alligators in existence. But Jack's size and gentle demeanor make him a bigger hit with the kids. Precious, he weigh. I don't know, but I don't want to hold him all day. That's why he's got his plate back here. Pounds? Mm, probably 60 or 70. Yeah, yeah, I don't need kisses there. For snake breeders and exotic animal exhibitors, this event's not only a chance to show off priceless pets, it's a place to make deals, meet the public, and schmooze the competition. Got something special. These are spectacular. Does he put a price on these guys? How do you price on his own one of? I don't know, but I got a bunch of dead presidents uh, here. <laughs> For the python hunters, it's an opportunity to educate the public and reach out to their fans. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yes, yes. In Florida, it seems nobody's too young to love a snake. This is the snake show. Yep, this is the snake show. Mm -hmm. So you guys, you guys happy to be here? You like doing snake shows with your dad? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite snake in here? That one. That one? Mm -hmm. That's your favorite one, the albino, huh? Yeah. That's one of the babies that I hatched out at my house. Yeah, he's, you, you got a cool snake. Now, is this a boy or a girl, do you know? Boy. That's a boy. Well, then, since he came from, what, does he have a name yet? No. No. Well, since he came from my house, why don't you call him, call him Mr. Greg? Yes, I'm a little weird. <laughs> Sean's wife, Jen, wants to start her own ball python breeding project, but there's a lot to learn. What's this yellow one called, the light color? That one? That yeah. is a caramel glow. It's a caramel albino ghost. Sean's a reptile expert, but here, even he can pick up some practical pointers. When you look at these two snakes, what's the difference? Well, there's not as much yellow in this one as there is that one. Right, but as babies right out of the egg, how difficult is that to tell? Very. Oh, right. I imagine. As babies, you can't tell. You have to wait till they shed like two or three times. Oh, really? And then the color comes through. And as more and more snake combinations are made with three genes and four genes and five genes, it's impossible to tell what's in it until it gets older. So one of the challenges for breeders is, what do you sell it for? In Florida, exotic reptiles are big business. Annual python sales alone can reach $10 million. But strict regulations to keep exotics out of the wild are hurting everybody. There's a lot of legislation. There's a lot of people that don't like what we do. And I think, honestly, they don't understand what we do. The python hunters work hard with state and federal agencies to promote responsible ownership. This is our opportunity to have a national and possibly international platform so people can see the positive aspects of the reptile industry and what all of us do. Show over. The guys get back to doing what they do best, hunting berms. When Burmese pythons escape or are intentionally released into Florida's Everglades, they can grow to become prolific breeders. One female was found carrying 85 developing eggs, well over the average of 36. Now the python hunters are hot on the trail of another legendary female. She could be as large as five meters and weigh 45 kilos. But one thing's certain, this mother berm's been making plenty of babies. The perfect territory for a snake. Over a 20-year lifespan, she could hatch as many as 500 young. Not all survive, but enough become breeders themselves, and the cycle continues. Look at that in the sun, right in the sun. There's a baby berm. 
The python hunters need to stop Mother Berm now, so her babies don't threaten Florida's native species. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Got him. The smallest berm I've ever seen. That's this year's. He's a hatchling. Look at his Oh, look, still got the scar. Today, they're searching a known Burmese python hotspot, an 1,800-hectare property in the Everglades known as Aerojet Road. I yeah, bought a 12 and a half footer up in the front, uh, north of the gates. The guys have recruited some extra help. You found the big one and then the small male? Yeah, about a nine-foot male. Uh, looked like he'd been run over. He had an old hump in his back. And... Fellow python hunters Mark Bell and Jeff Fobb have come along to help search this vast area. Gator right over there. Yeah. Female. Big girl. Getting that sun. Same thing these pythons should be doing. We've got permission to get in here in this old aquaculture facility. There's just a ton of abandoned buildings and stuff. And check it out, because there's a lot of cover. Got a vertebrae from a berm. It's only partial. I don't know where the rest of it is, but it's definitely Burmese. More. Here's another piece of it, some more vertebrae. This is not big enough to be our mama we're looking for. Here's more. See, I knew we brought Mark along. He's a good bird dog. Piled debris and metal fish tanks are good hiding places, but covered structures offer something more. You know what abandoned buildings draw in? Rats. Rats. And rats draw in snakes. It's the perfect environment for Mother Berm to thrive. See the rat traps everywhere? There's half of a rat in that thing over there. We know that there's a, at least one big female that's still producing in this area that made it through the cold snap. We can take her out of here. That's, that's a good population that keeps coming back every year that we can stop. Like always, I think it's about uh, covering as much ground as we can. So we get moving, we get on it. Suddenly, something catches their eye. These gator drags. This one's pretty fresh here. Look how deep this is. Goes all the way to the water from side to side. They're just using this as a as a bridge. Hey, look at this. That is a python crawl. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. You think that could be our mama? It could be. It's, uh, it wasn't in a hurry. It's a nice straight path it's taken, so it's not uh, going back and forth trying to get out of anybody's way. That's nine. This is, this is five to six inches right here. I'm looking at the narrowest width right here. That's still a good distance. I mean, this could yeah. easily be the mother. No, she went water to water. Came out over there and back into the drink over here. Yeah, I mean, they're going to use the water for uh, temperature regulation as well as uh, getting from place to from point A to point B. They can move through it. But look at what she went into. I mean, talk about a needle in a haystack. The big snake may have ventured into hostile territory, but berms are well equipped to survive here, even with the American alligator as their competition. Fights between these two apex predators are epic and deadly. A berm as big as the mother would have no trouble stretching her jaws around a young alligator. This invasive python could easily threaten the balance of nature in an already sensitive ecosystem. Mother berm must be found. Nope, nothing here. Holes all over in there. Oh, really? Done nothing, huh? Nope. Next to the deserted fish farm is a marshy area where the guys hope to find the big berm basking in the sun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gotta move quick. Woo! Hey, Sean, <laughs> I found the mother load. It's an armored catfish, sucker mouth. And we've got little rasping teeth in there. Are you going to need a hand, Sean? Oh, I, I'm good. I'm not stuck. I'm just resting. Here you go. You want him? These are an hey. invasive. 
These are pretty animals. Yeah, they are. They're beautiful. I like them. They just don't belong. You know, they they uh, they den by burrowing up into the into the mud and clay and everything to make their dens to spawn, and they just they'll tear a bank up. Our permits do actually say non-native species collection permit. Yeah, I mean, there's stuff that eats those things, but uh, you know, it's it's not easy pickings because there's not a lot of meat and they're just encased in a nice sheet of armor. Exotic armored catfish may be easy pickings, but the mother berm could be much harder to find. This is a great spot to hide because there's a matted uh, vine covering this whole area over here. She could sit up in here for days and we would never, ever see her. They can cover, they can bath, they can nest. They got everything right here. They got rats, yep. Yeah, buffet that comes to them. This is Python Shangri-La here. But this berm paradise isn't yielding up their grand prize. It's not long before the guys discover another unexpected creature. You guys, check this out. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, my god. Little bar now? Yeah. My bet is he drowned. I like him a lot better alive. That's a beautiful animal in there alive. Yeah. Very regal flying through the air. Wow, this is unreal. Suddenly, Greg spots something moving in the water. I see it. Yeah, I see we're right in the middle. Here he is. There's a little red, red belly turtle right here, trapped in here. He's headed back that way under all that green goop. Yeah, he's gonna die in he's here. He's right there. Here he comes, here he comes. All right, saved his life. It's a nice male. Do yeah, that. get him out of here, put him back in the regular pond. Looks like it's holding so, up pretty good, though. You can tell he's a male from these long toenails in the front. Just a beautiful animal and a native species, so we can take him out of here and put him back into the Everglades right on the other side of this wall and live a nice, happy life. Now you got to fend for yourself. He's big enough that he doesn't have to worry about these little gators in here. He'll be fine. He'll make lots of babies and keep the ecosystem going. The mother berm will live to see another day, but the python hunters have a backup plan. I'd like to set up a cam right here. An infrared game can up. I think we need to regroup and come back and hit it again. And then we keep hitting it, eventually we'll find it. All right, folks, and now it's time for Florida's five-day forecast. We got Tammy coming up here with the weather. The next day, Sean wakes up to startling news. Winters come early. The forecast for all of South Florida calls for more frost throughout the state over the coming week. Looks like we're in for another record cold winter. Last year's cold stunned and killed a lot of reptiles. Today's hunt is all about catching green iguanas, too cold to make a speedy getaway. These trees have just enough foliage makes it tough. Cold-blooded reptiles need sun to control their body temperature. With nighttime lows close to the freezing mark, they're fighting for their lives. I haven't seen a single lizard out. I think our only chance is gonna be to check some of those burrows along that bank, maybe up under the uh, uh, yeah. Bridges here. We're used to seeing them green. Yeah. yeah. They're going to be brown. They're going to be almost black. They're going to be so chill. It's getting colder as we stand. Yeah, no, Let's get you. moving. I think we got everything we yeah, need. Yeah, we're good. I got a temp gun. 33 degrees, 36. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's cold. In weather like this, hunters expect to find iguanas either frozen in burrows or recharging their batteries in the life-giving sunshine. What's that? It's an iguana right on, the, on, right on the rock. Hey, we got an iguana. Ah, they'll scare it in. Yeah, it's on a rock right there. If the guys are lucky, this iguana will be too cold to move a muscle, making it an easy catch for the eager crew. Yes. Looking straight up at us. He's moving. Is he headed in the water? He sees us. He's headed towards the water. He's in the water. Where'd he go? What right happened, there. fellas? I can't believe he was moving at that temperature. Somebody want to cross over and spot or check out that, that Yeah, bank? if I get over there, I can probably see what's on this bank ahead of you guys. Look for burrows on that side as well. All right. For the hunters, it's a race against time. 
the rising air temperature will revive and energize the iguanas. Mikey. Two iguanas. Two iguanas in the ditch. On this side. This side. Quick, quick, Mikey's running. Let's go, let's go, let's go. There's a burrow right there diagonal across. You see it? Whoa, whoa, whoa. A little big yeah. male right there. That's the one that just swam up. It's still yeah, wet. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's still wet. Oh, oh I need so backup on this call. It's estimated that one million iguanas are imported as pets into the U.S. every year. But they need special diets and large enclosures, so many fail to survive in captivity. Sean, you know the plan? Yeah. Got a little female right here, but I think that big male yeah. is going to be easier for him to flop over yeah, with well, his he's head. higher. He's higher up. Yeah. So. You and Sean are going to go around to that side. I'm going to line up on this side as a spotter. The lizard's facing this direction, so when he goes, he's going to go that way. So I'm going to line you up a little bit to Off my left, to left, which will be your right. Mike, flip your net. Sometimes, to catch a reptile, you have to mimic one. So I'd, I'd lay the net backwards like this, Mikey, and do a full out boom. Did you see her? Yeah. OK, then you don't need me to squat. She's cold. Yeah, she is. The There's... only thing that's moving is her eyelids. Uh -huh. She's sucking in all that body heat from Mikey. Let me see what she's got just on her hands right here, because those felt ice cold. We got 58. Try right here. Try back. All right, we got 67 on her back. You cannot tell me at this temperature that she has any digestive activity going on. She, you know, no. I mean, she, if anything, she's a little bloated. You see that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this that's is a beautiful uh, animal. If she was warm and, and you know healthy on a on a warm day, she would be bright green. But uh, you know she's dark. I mean, look at those claws right there. That'll lacerate you quickly. I don't know what the heck I did, but yeah, Holy I got something. Holy cow! Look at that. Warming up, sweetie. Oh yeah, yeah. warming up. This is one more female that that male doesn't have in his harem. You know, which means that's several dozen baby iguanas that aren't going to make it. Uh, you know, into the wild from this female. With another invasive captured, the python hunters take a break for some important work at home. For Sean, that means tending to his most prized snake. But this four and one half meter long Burmese python isn't on Sean's hit list. Oh, that's nice. His name's Fluffy, and he's been a special part of Sean's family for decades. Let go, Fluff. Let go. Come on. Hold still. Back For in. 23 years, Fluffy's helped educate thousands of kids, and he's wormed his way into Sean's heart. When the weather's nice, Sean likes to take Fluffy for a crawl. Good for you. Get you some sun. You're getting old. You get cold's easy. You're still pretty. While Sean dotes over Fluffy, Michael's busy at his facility setting the mood for another kind of reptilian love. Love is in the air. Better be love in the air in here. <laughs> it's winter. And for captive bread ball pythons, that means breeding season. Michael's put a lot of work into this dating game. He plans to make snakes nobody has seen before. All right, buddy. Here's 
the girlfriend. Go get her. Make me some babies. He could make hundreds of thousands of dollars selling the babies. I don't know if anybody's made lavender genetic stripes or not, but this would be a very nice year to do that. Michael and Lisa like to pair the frisky snakes together, but they don't always see eye to eye on the right way to get them in the mood. Oh, yeah, look at that. She's looking ripe. Yeah, guys. Ripe? Really? I don't know if ladies like that. Go figure it out there, putty. Are you giving any words to the ladies? All I hear is, yeah, get in there, go, boy, and... Some males are very amorous, and, and they're really good breeders, and constant. They eat during breeding season, and they breed just about every time you put them in with a girl. And some males, they're, they're new, they're young, or they're just not interested, or they go off of food too fast, and then, and then you have to stop breeding them early. Although they expect the snakes to breed, seeing them entwined is a welcome relief. Yes, we've got a successful lockup here. When snakes do it, they look like pretzels. Perfect tail tie right there. They're in love and in coitus. And I do not want to be coitus interruptus. Chores done, the guys return to Aerojet Road. A fresh snake trail has convinced them that Mother Burns still in the area. Now they need visual confirmation. Technology is amazing. Get this infrared camera. No, this, this, these field cameras are great. They've got a uh, like really highly sensitive motion and IR detector on them. So anything, this one's set to like 50 feet. So anything that moves in front of this camera in a 50-foot cone will trigger this thing to take it a digital image. Where do you guys want to put it? Basically, they're coming you know, right along this, almost along this mound right here, uh, going right down into the water here. So probably this corner. You got the hammer? I think you need it. Nope. Well, we need to get a little lower than that, or is that low enough? No, no that's low enough because it pans cover. out. Yeah. Oh, OK. It's, it's a wide angle. The whole kind. sensor is a cone. So it's a, <laughs> a wide angle lens. Yep. OK, gotcha. Now somebody just doesn't run off with it, we're good. It's got a lock on it. They'll never figure out they can just pick it up. <laughs> now all the python hunters can do is wait and hope something big triggers it. I found the live animal. These things are all over the place. We're out picking apples in the fall. The farmers tell us that the more black on the caterpillars means the, the harsher the winter the harsher is going to be. Winter. That's a lot of black. We're in for a badass winter. With a cold wind blowing, the guys are ready to turn tail when they spot something. Michael! Michael! Mikey! I got a dead boa. He's biting himself. What do you got? Dead boa. Check this out, man. This wasn't here last time because we checked this pile. And it, look, it's biting itself. Wow. wow. This thing's cold. Feel this. It's like icy cold. Yeah, it is. Have you seen that before? As they go into, as they start to die, they're going to death throes. They're light lashing out and freaking out. That's pretty sad. The boa constrictor is another unwanted species. It can grow over three meters long and weigh over 27 kilos. Boas are rarely found in southern Florida. They come from tropical Central and South America, where they're tolerated around homes to control rat infestations. Wow, that, that's not what I expected to find here. No. You know, I'm, I'm looking for straight Burmese pythons. You know, even if this snake were alive right now, and tonight it's supposed to be down to 32 or 33, it wouldn't make it. Once you get into the interior, North America, hardly any of this tropical stuff can survive. I mean, it, it doesn't it, it doesn't have a chance. Boa constrictors are popular collectibles in Florida. How this one arrived on Aerojet Road remains a mystery. But one thing's certain, it doesn't belong here. With the motion camera standing sentry, the guys head off for another green iguana hunt, this time at night. All right. Hunting by the moonlight. Check out that moon, boys. Oh, that's beautiful. Hit those bushes. Right here, right here. 
Green iguanas are tree dwellers. They seldom come down except to mate, lay eggs, bask, and graze. Okay. That tree right there, it, right there that he's on, could have just moved in a little bit. Let's see if we can get it from a different angle. Turn around, Greg. Let's see if we can get it from a different light. Um, there's one. There it is, right there. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's the one right there. So nose right up in there, and right. I'm gonna shake it out. It's gonna right. jump. So what are you gonna do? I'm gonna crawl up in there. It looks like a relatively slender it's tree. Steep. Oh, it just went. You got it. Get it. Get I can't it. see it. Here's the net, Greg. Here's the net. I don't see the lizard. Did it almost hit you? It came down over there. In the hole? Yeah. Yeah. Let's Get load up and uh, find another one. A night hunt poses special challenges, but using lights to confuse the iguanas increase their chances of a capture. Look, look, look right there. Back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Greg, spin it around. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, She's awake. She's it. awake. She's moving. Still there? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's moving. Get ready. Okay. It's moving. Right. She knows we're here. Coming down, coming down. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it. Got it. Got it. Get it. Yep. Yeah, get it. Hold on, hold on. Get on. Get on. Get on. Get on. I got the tail. Getting up under it? Hold on. Hold. Yeah. Gotta get the net out of there. Yeah, hold on. I got I got the back legs. Let me get. Got it. Got it. Got it? Yep. Okay. Sweet. Nice. Nice. There we go. Look at the forearms on that thing. It looks like Popeye. That is a pretty animal. That female is living fat and happy. This iguana appears in excellent health, apart from one minor injury. This tail regrows. The vertebrae in their tail will separate. The tail keeps wiggling, and the animal runs away. The tail keeps wiggling to keep whatever predators after it. Focuses on this tail wiggling, and the animal runs away. But you can definitely see with that break in, in the ridge exactly where it stops and goes out through with the regenerated tail. Let's bag this beautiful thing up and uh, keep motoring. In Central America, green iguanas are hunted and eaten. People refer to them as tree chickens. But this lucky girl is nobody's dinner. She's going to become Greg's son Lane's new pet. Over at Michael's house, Greg's daughter Lexi is ready to pick a pet of her own. She wants a big monitor lizard, but there's lots of options to consider. All of these are juveniles. None of these are adults, so they have lots of years of growing ahead of them. This is called a blue tree monitor. They have razor sharp toes. The best way not to get bit is to let them keep walking through your hand. You sure you don't want to hold him? I'm sure. He's kind of cool. If you're not He's... comfortable, that's OK. We won't push it on you. This is a green tree monitor. He looks fast. And if he were mad, he would take the hind legs and he'd wrap them around my arm and he'd rake. And that hurts a lot. Well, they look pretty fast and like they would claw you, and I don't want that. Michael has four species of monitor lizard for Lexi to choose from. See that? Yep, that's what gives them their name is the peach throat. And these guys Gonna bite are me. prone to bite. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> if I get bit, I'll just scream. <laughs> <laughs> OK, don't Mom, bite me. If it bites you, I'm going to laugh. Lexi, I don't think we want this one. I don't. Uh. I don't like that mouth. <laughs> Monitors can be frisky and aggressive. Lexi will need courage to own one. There you go. Now you got him. Now let him go from hand to hand. Mm -mm. Your hands. No? Okay. If you can't deal with this, how? how... I'm afraid he's going to pinch me with his nails or he's something. He's not, baby. There's only one monitor left in the box. For Lexi, it's now or never. This is a baby black roughneck monitor. They have this beautiful little raptor type face. These guys just hang out. I like that lizard. Now, how big does that get? They'll also get about five feet. It's a, it's a body about the size of an orange. Right. And two, two and a half feet of body and another, you know, two, two and a half feet of tail. Finally, Lexi chooses. Despite its name, the black roughneck monitor is quite gentle. Now Greg needs to settle on a mellow price. My question to you is what can you trade me? How many ball pythons <laughs> are these going to cost me? I don't know. I have to look at your list. <laughs> Two days have passed since the guys visited Aerojet Road. It's time to see if the mother berm was ready for her close up. See any tracks? No. Let's see what we got in here, man. They're about to see if something triggered the camera. 
Out here, it could be anything. A Florida panther, an American alligator, or even the mother burn. <laughs> a little, little blurry, I couldn't tell. All right, well, come back and check it out again. A solitary crow wandering past the camera isn't what the python hunters were expecting. <laughs> the SS Python Hunter. You ready? Yeah, we're ready to rock in this boat. With no berm to boast about, the guys set their sights on a different target, the invasive Nile Monitor Lizard. Let's go. <laughs> the hunters usually need net guns to bag them. But with the cold weather slowing the lizards down, the guys think they have a good chance of catching the big Niles barehanded. The first big male we saw was right there, right in that opening. Yeah, big male. <sighs> I got nothing. Anybody see him? No. no. I think he went down in a hole. Oh, we've got a Nile monitor right there. Straight on that log. Head, Liam's. head. head. His head's going that hey, way. Great. That's going to be a hard catch. Oh, he's moving. No, he's slinking into the bushes. No, he's coming back down towards us. Hey, we got to move. Well, let's get up there. We can get a, maybe we can get a hand on that tail. Yeah, I got a tail. You got a tail? Yeah. This right here, that dip, there you go, there you go. Yo, there, he's coming, there, hold on, hold on. Hold, hold on, on, on the ground, hold on. Oh, he got me. Hold it. Oh, I got him. Oh, he's got a, a plastic thing around his neck, trash. Look at that. What he, is oh that? Oh, my God, look at that. Look at it, it's cutting into the flesh right here. Hang on, I got a leatherman here. We can, somebody wants to grab that. Maybe we can get it off there. That would suffocate him at some point and cut off the blood flow over his head. The native wildlife gets that stuff wrapped around their necks, too. Well, I think that hurts. He, you hear me? went like, <sighs> Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I'm sure it feels better to have that off. And you know they eat prey, which they, they gulp it down and expand that gular sac, that throat. But he couldn't do that. He basically had a collar on his neck that couldn't couldn't expand. He probably and, had to spit out a number of prey items that he tried to swallow that oh, yeah. he just couldn't get down. People thought we were just python hunters. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, well, we're lizard catchers, lizard diggers. <laughs> you name it, man. Although they saved this Nile from a slow, painful death, its fate is sealed by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission. Authorities must find invasives new homes or euthanize them. But with no takers for this wily Nile, Sean does the next best thing. He donates its body to science. Back at his lab, Sean and wife Jen perform a necropsy. Maybe if it's a male, typically they smell worse. <laughs> Has some fat, been eating something. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have as much uh, mass to it. Mm -mm, it's much thinner. At least she is eating, um, even with that constriction on her neck. I bet she's had that around her, her neck for more than a year or so. Right, I was gonna yeah, say. Yeah, she's so. grown into it. It could be mm -hmm. two years, three years. The plastic ring made it impossible for the Nile to swallow substantial prey. So we find find a cricket leg, a cricket head. And if I was this big animal, it's not very much mass, very much food to eat. Yeah, that's not nutrient-rich uh, prey item. Sean documents the necropsy for his research on invasive species, and then for comparison, brings in another Nile which was feeding normally. He wants to know what these cunning predators typically feed on. I think we got a stomach full. Look at this, it ate recently. You want to do the honors, or? No, go ahead. Okay. I like it. Let's see what we got. Eggs. <gasps> Look at that. Oh, wow. Nothing but eggs. Oh, yeah. And now, what is that exact size and shape of egg remind you of what we have here? Iguanas. Iguanas. Yeah. Four, five. 14, 15, 16, 17 green iguana eggs. The big problem for me on these is the American crocodile because of this right here. My concern is that these things being egg eaters um, will go in and, and they will depredate the nest of the American crocodile 
and, and wipe out the new generations. The necropsy provides Sean with valuable new information. Nile monitors are eating the eggs of another of Florida's invasive reptiles, the green iguana. But elsewhere in his facility, the news isn't good. Sean's beloved python is clinging to life in intensive care. Fluffy is seriously ill. He just doesn't seem to be getting any better. Poor Fluff. 23 years old, got an upper respiratory. This guy is producing, ooh, look, at, ooh, look at this, ooh, ooh. producing massive amounts of mucus. They've got to hack it up. They've got to bring it up, you know? And, uh, but you look at this and it's, uh, it's nasty. It's horrible. Upper respiratory infections are common in old burns like Fluffy. Cold and wet weather are often to blame. Bacteria is filling his lungs and he's not responding to Sean's treatments. Losing Fluffy would be a huge blow. This animal is, um, has been utilized for massive numbers of educational presentations and you know, to educate kids. He's had mm -hmm. thousands of kids you know, that have learned from him. And who do we use as a replacement? Who do we use for an animal to bring out and educate kids with and get people connected to it in a, in a tactile, mm -hmm. you know, personal manner? Um, as many animals as get dropped here, eventually someone will drop one that's a well-behaved Burmese that we could trust, you know, around kids and stuff. Yeah. I mean, because... I hear you. I don't know. You know, it just, it sucks. Mm -hmm. It sucks that his final reward is that he gets old and his immune system gets depressed and, and then, you know, ultimately we probably have to put him down. Right. I know, but he's like part of our family. It's about quality of life. For Fluffy, only time will tell. Refusing to give up their search for the mother berm, the hunters return to Aerojet Road. They're determined to stem the tide of fresh hatchlings before next year. If the cold doesn't kill her, the guys want to be sure she's either dead, captured, or removed. They're back at the abandoned fish farm and discover demolition underway. There was all kinds of debris and stuff piled up there. Well, they may have loaded up a berm or two in those uh, dumpsters. And just the vibrations alone from this equipment is enough to displace, you know, a big animal. So if she's still alive, she's going to have to either push out in the glades or find something close by. Crews are working to restore the land back to nature. Hey, boss, how you doing? All right, how you doing? Not too bad. Hey, we're out here uh, we working with FWC and that. Looking for pythons. You haven't seen any? Yeah, a little baby one. A uh, baby? About a foot and a half. I let oh, it go. Really? You haven't seen any larger ones? No, nah, a guy was out here the other day said he killed like a nine footer across the street. Is that right? Yeah. Is that right? So just a baby. Is that what y'all out here doing? Hunt, hunting snakes? Hunting pythons, yeah, that's pythons. right. Y'all got any yet? Yeah, we've gotten quite a few off this area. We, we know there's a big female out here, which is what we were kind of looking. And we know she's in this area because two years in a row, we found, uh, we found hashlings up and down this area right yeah, here. Yeah, it's probably one of her babies I found. Where did you find that little hashling? Right here, right here where this track goes. is. Really, right where this old trailer sat? Yeah, yeah, it was in the pile. I picked it up and I seen it hanging down from a box and I pulled them out. Really? Yeah. Crazy, so yeah, I mean, we found hashlings right here before, two years in a row. How big is it, you know? Um, there's a lot of alligator drags and there's a big python crawl. And just from that crawl alone, Pretty substantial. Probably 12 to, to 15 feet yeah. at least. Big girl. Thanks uh, yeah, for the info. We'll stop and see what you knew. Yeah, if y'all catch one here, bring it by. We'll see. Yeah. All right, we'll Thank let you, you know. Yeah, no problem. Take man. care. Thanks. In the next 50 years, it's estimated Florida's population growth could displace as much as 3 million hectares of forest and wetlands. Turning old facilities like these back into green areas is a welcome sight. But demolition can scare off snakes. You know, that big female could have got pushed into here. There's a lot of cover. Yeah, I mean, with all the construction going on around here, I mean, this would be the one of the last places of uh, dense cover for. Where are you hiding, big mama? Anything? No. Uh, 
All right, well, let's keep looking. I mean, these guys have got this cleared, so you ain't gonna find anything right here. After searching the remaining habitat for anything they can tie to Mother Berm, the guys return to check their camera before a severe thunderstorm washes it away. I guess it's my turn, huh? Yeah, check it out, man. Let's see what we got. Lots of birds. Birds are keeping us busy. Well, we, we do know that we've got uh, at least two years worth of babies from one big girl. I'm curious to see if we've got a monster here. Oh, well, back to the snake hunts. To capture the mother berm, the hunters have one final option. To take their search to its deepest level yet, underground. Look at this cavity. Hey, this burrow over here would actually be really good for that cam. OK, we're recording. So this looks like it might be a snake hole? No, yeah, it looks, uh, oh, it looks wow, like some... a big old cavern. Well, not only that is, all the other ones around here have all this down and dead cane and, and grass and everything around it. This one's clear. Something's moving in and out of this thing. There's, there's no cobwebs or anything in there. No, I know. It's... Poking around in burrows is risky business. Venomous diamondback rattlers could lurk in places like this. To the right. <sighs> My right or the camera right? Uh, camera right. Uh. Straight ahead. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, another cavern there. Well, that's a great place for something to hide. At the corner of this rock right here is 83, 83 degrees right off the corner of that rock. We come right in here to this shaded area. We've got 47, 46 degrees. Well, the problem is, if they take cover to get in there in that dark area during the night to cover down, are they going to have enough warmth and energy to get back out to that sun, that, that area that's 83 degrees? People don't understand. They say, well, if a native snake or lizard can survive this temperature, why can't an invasive tropical? And the answer is they have not evolved with the instincts and mechanism to seek out cover from the cold. They don't know what cold is. All right, man, that's the last place we saw some sign of a big, big Burmese python. They head back to the land bridge in hopes of picking up more clues. More gator drags. Gator drags, but nothing else. Some old ones. I'll be real surprised if we find another python slide here. Fresh gator slides, two of them real new. This one right here is real recent. Oh, check these footprints out right here. Oh, uh, two nice ones right there, look at that. On either side of that slide. And then you got them going back into the water here. Four toes there, the heel comes all the way back to here. That's a good size gator. Yeah, these are perfect. That old track from that Burmese we found, she's moving back and forth over the same exact land mass into the same water as these gators. She's playing Russian roulette. Warm. She hangs out in that same area. She's going to be spaghetti. We're going to find her in a gator turd. It really doesn't matter if we get rid of her, Mother Nature gets rid of her with the cold, or if one of these gators grabs a hold of her, as long as she's not around next year to make babies. Now, all that stands between a happy ending for Aerojet Road and closing the case on Mother Berm is a body, dead or alive. If they can't find a berm corpse, the hunters will need to find something else, the big gator that left its track on the land bridge next to the berms. That's the only Everglades predator big enough and strong enough to have killed and eaten the Mother Berm. That's a true python hunter right there. And for these know. canals, I've never seen anything this big Oh. Right here. That's a berm killer. That's what that is. That's the berm killer here. He's gargantuan. Oh, cool. yeah. Look at the gut on that thing. Berms He's are spaghetti to that. Greg's certain the mother berm lost her turf battle to this large predator. You know, you talked about these berms. They swim on the water, they're dinner. They swim under the water, they're, they're dinner. dinner. <laughs> they don't have a choice, man. I mean, something like that. There's not a berm alive that is going to take that down. Talk 
talk about vigilante. He's got 24-7 watch out here. Mm -hmm. You know, we come out here, when we get out here, he's watching these canals. Anything moves on this canal, he knows it. It's hard to compete with an animal so efficient as a gator when we're hunting python. That's all right. I don't mind the help. 